Hello YouTube friends. Now that the summer kitchen roof is complete and it is dry, we don't have any leaks going on, um, we're going to continue moving forward with putting in the floor and getting the cook stove put in. Um, we really want to start being able to utilize the kitchen in the way that it's intended, so getting the cook stove in is really exciting to me. Um, and then we'll start enclosing it in with the siding and the um, screens and um, start working on keeping the bugs out. So let's get going. All right, continue on working with the walls. I need to get a wall into this corner and the other corner over there. And I want it to be flush with this wall that's previously on the cabin, so I need to cut off the rest of this overhang of the original cabin roof. So I'm gonna use my saw just like I did before to put the ledger board in. Here we go. Um, I've got my framing in. This will have an outside wall here and then an inside wall that continues on from the insulated pink foam board here from the cabin. So this will be just one big flat wall continue to the corner and then we'll have just a big flat wall in here. Just the boards will continue on on the inside then. And the corner will be, this corner will be filled into with boards, um, probably inside and outside for this section. But then the rest of it, it'll just be, um, the lower half will be walled from the outside and then screened on the up top side all the way around. Except for over here where the stove is going to go, that'll be a complete wall. Alright, so we need to get a stovepipe to go through the wall. Um, we're going to do just regular stovepipe, not insulated chimney pipe, so I want to make it really a big distance. So I have this old ring from when I made the barrel stove and the lid. I'm going to cut a hole in the lid that's the diameter of the stovepipe and that's how we're going to pass it through the wall. All 
right. Okay, I'm gonna put a board, I think just across the bottom, give it a little bit more stiffness. And um, I think it's coming along good. I mean, we can fudge it a little later, but so it's gonna have to get cut right there. Specifically, it burns wood. And we want the, the summer kitchen to burn. Nope. Nope. So that's why we're putting pavers on the floor under the stove. That's why we're putting pavers on the floor. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're putting metal on the wall. Mm -hmm. And then we go through the wall. Yep. That's the big circle I have yep. to keep wood away from the fire. Yeah. Okay, so I've got the stovepipe installed as far as we can install it until 
um, we have the stove in place and we put the last section up to the flue and we're getting ready to do that but first we want to put down some flooring so that the pavers we're going to set the stove on can sit on top of the flooring and then the stove on top of that so I guess that's what's next. Pretty close. Okay. Are we gonna pivot again? Not till we get close. Okay, so we think we're ready to start up the stove for the first time. I have the damper open, um, got the air all the way open. Um, we're just going to feed in a few sticks for now until we see that it's drafting correctly. And then maybe we'll put in some more bigger stuff to see how that goes. So we've got sticks and newspaper in there and the newspaper we use to wipe the oil on the cooktop. And so now we're just going to light it with the propane torch. Stops doing that. We'll 
check the stovepipe and see if anything's coming out yet. Okay, what better way to try out the stove but to cook some tacos on it? Okay, so I am putting the boards um, up here against the cabin so they can dry. Um, these are going to be siding boards for us, and as you can see, um, maybe up there on the top, um, the siding we're doing is a charred and then oiled siding. And in order to char the boards nicely, they need to be dry first. It doesn't actually work out at all to try and char wet wood. It, it just doesn't take. And then also, if they're dry, they will absorb the oil better too. So. Um, we're going to stand them up here against the cabin for a couple days in this hot summer sun. It doesn't really take that many days, maybe two, three, four days, and they're ready to go. Um, and so I'll stand these all up here. I got a couple of logs standing up already. We'll get them stood up, and then in a couple days they'll be ready to cut to fit and then to char. Okay, so it's a new day here on the channel. Um, I have spent the last couple days milling about four logs for siding. Um, so I have um, exterior siding and I have interior siding. I've been putting up some interior siding this morning. I want to try and get some of it used up so I know how much more I have to mill. This is going to be a double layer. So there's going to be gaps, obviously, that you can see that I'm not going to cover with battens. I'm just going to put another layer that will completely overlap the gap. And so this will be two layers thick. And so this first layer doesn't matter a whole lot about the gaps and how perfectly it fits. It's the next layer that's going to matter a lot more. And the more tedious and, and more specific I get about it, the better it's going to look. And so I'm going to take a lot more time for the second layer. But I wanted to stop and show you a little bit of what I'm doing. I'm just um, cutting boards to length and nailing them up there. So I had to stop deciding so I could finish framing in this corner. Um, I've got to finish framing on the other side, but now I can continue siding here and keep going until I run out of milk wood.
Okay, so I milled a whole bunch of boards this morning to try and have enough boards to do this whole wall for the second layer. If you see, I have the second layer from here that way and just the first layer from here that way. So I'm just working my way around. Um, the second layer is fitting in really nice. We're making sure we overlap any gaps from the first layer and so it's, it's going to be one continuous wall between the joints meeting up at different places and getting nailed on. And that way no bugs can crawl through, which is the most important thing because we're just trying to screen this in and keep bugs out. So it's looking pretty nice. Going to keep going. Okay, so the next step is to get some of the siding ready for the summer kitchen. After we put the screens all around the top, we're gonna put siding on the bottom half to close it in. And we cut up a bunch of these boards. These were the boards that were leaning up against the cabin earlier to dry out. They are nice and dry now and not sticky. And so now we need to char them. Our siding we have chosen for the cabin is charred and oiled. And so the next step, since we've got them all cut, the right height is to char them, and we're gonna char them on the barrel stove. So here we go. Okay, it looks like it's going good enough now for us to get our char on. Now that all the boards are charred, it's time to oil them. Alright, so we've got everything I need to oil up the boards, but first some pine needles fell on them last night, so I'm going to have to blow them off.
Okay, so we are using used motor oil out of our cars that we've been saving to oil these. It's a great use for a product like that, and it um, doesn't go to waste, and it gets used up in a productive manner. This looks like it's going down real easy and it's going to work real well. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Okay, so I have all the boards charred and oiled, so they are protected now and ready to go up. Let's go on to the next thing. that's hanging on the right side of the staples, up by the staples, pulls around the corner there, and just hold, pull tight, you know, not against the staples, but just pull tight. Do I look like I'm as high as you are over there? Mm. On the corner? Yeah. Okay.
Okay, so we've got the screens up. Up next is to put on the boards that I've charged in oil. I'm gonna have the boys bring them to me and I'm going to nail them on. Here we go. All right. Okay, so here we go. Screens are supposed to keep bugs out, not in. I think we've built the world's largest fly trap.
Okay, so I have been working on the screen doors. I have this one built the frame inside of the opening for the screen door. Um, I'm going to now take it off of the hinges and lay it flat on a table so that I can put the screen on the top and then I'll put it back up. Okay, so the cross diagonal brace I put in here keeps it really rigid. It makes it nice and square so it doesn't move that way. And then I bought these corner braces to help hold it together um, so that it doesn't come apart at the corner. So I'll put those on first. Okay, so here's what the screen looks like on. I'm gonna go reinstall it in the opening and then work on putting boards to cover the bottom. Um, all this is gonna to have to get trim. It's gonna be a big, long process. Um, I don't even know if I'll video too much of that, just show you what it looks like eventually on another video when it's done. But um, this is the, the screen is now stapled on and it will get some trim on the top of it later, but for now it's just stapled on. We're kind of at the point where we'd really like this um, closed-in porch, the screen, to be functional. Um, it's not perfectly functional. We've got gaps in all the boards that I have to put battens on the outside, you know, to fill that in. But for the most part, once I get this door up, it will keep out most of the flying insects. And so that's what we're shooting for right now. Yeah, it's going to have to go up about right there is actually about right where it needs to go okay. once I get a screw or two in. Is that to um, clear the top okay? You can let go now, but push. Yeah. Push it out. There you go. Okay, you can let go now. Let's just check to see how it swings. Oh yeah. Okay, so there's lots of work that has to be done still. Um, there's lots of trim work that needs to be done. I'm gonna put some handles on this, but it is kind of closed in now. Um, we've got, obviously there's gaps in the siding here and there needs to be siding here because there's holes in the tin. So bugs could get in still, 
but for the most part flying bugs are going to be stopped by all this so flies and mosquitoes so until I get the battens up you know then and the rest of the side and then I'll completely get it but for now there is some level of keeping the bugs out <laughs> which is the goal that we were trying to get to and so we're gonna end this video here um, it's been a lot of work and I'm ready to take a little break but we'll see what else we can get done but for now that's that <laughs>